guys, Pathogaming Gaming right here right now, bringing you another lullaby. Today, we'll be going over two costs. The first two costs is Annie, and Annie blasts a cone of fire, dealing magic damage to enemies in front of her. Then, she creates a shield on herself for eight seconds. Now, Annie is a mage, which means if you have three mages in, she's gonna cast twice. So she'll do, instead of 350, she'll do 80% of that, which is like 250-ish, 270, something like that, twice. So it's essentially like 500 damage instead of 350. And she'll shield herself twice. What you need to know about Annie is she's mana locked while she has a shield on. So for eight seconds, she will have the shield and she cannot gain mana. So the way for her to actually regain mana, start gaining mana again, is for the shield to either disappear after eight seconds or for her to take enough damage for the shield to pop. Uh, now she's also fortune. Uh, yeah, you can play her for fortune as I, as I mentioned in the one cost. Fortune is sometimes good, but it's also risky. While uh, with mages, she's a great frontline mage. That's why I put her as three star, because if you get a chosen any mage and you have reasonable items for uh, Puff the Magic Dragon, AKA Aurelian Soul. Uh, you can just run five mage with Annie as your front line. And at three star, like the shield amount is 900. Uh, with five mages, it's 105%. So she casts twice and shields herself for a bit over 1800 HP, which is kind of high. That's like essentially like 75% uh, of, her, of her health, right? So, and if she, if you build like tank items, like brambles and uh, declaw, stuff like that, possibly even titans, like she's extremely difficult to kill. And that buys you ample time for your magic dragon to take down your enemies. Now, Braum. Braum puts up, a, puts up his shield for four seconds, reducing his damage taken from that direction. He also protects other units. Um, what I've what I've discovered with Brom is he's a decent vanguard. He do, he does a great job against compositions that have just frontline damage, right? So anything coming directly at Brom from your opponent is perfect. If your opponent has assassins, Brom will be the last one to survive. He's completely useless. If if your opponent has sharpshooters, they will just uh, like obliterate your backline because the bounces will just bypass Braum. So he's really, sp he's really strong, he's really powerful, when he can actually protect your comp, which isn't always the case. He can't always protect your comp. That's why he isn't the best. Um, he's, a, he's a Vanguard. Uh, Dragon Soul, I don't like him as a Dragon Soul. I, I've tried Dragon Soul with Braum. The problem is with Braum, he's typically, like you need to position very well so that he isn't the first one to take damage. Because if he's the first one to take damage, this bastard never dies. Like he just like he just survives until the last last man standing, right? His attack speed is low, and by giving the Dragon Soul buff to him, you don't really gain anything. So he's kind of a tricky tricky hero to play. So I would I would kind of avoid uh, playing Brom for Dragon Soul. Just play him as a Vanguard and try to position so that his shield, once it goes up, it actually protects your backline units. If there's assassins, if there are sharpshooters, he's not worth it. Janna. Now Janna, I really wasn't sure whether I want to put the stars next to her because she's a force to be reckoned with. Janna shields herself. Uh, sorry, Janna shields uh, her some. What the hell is Yeah, Janna shields uh, some of the lowest health allies for four seconds. And the sum is two, three, or four. Shielded allies also gain attack damage for the duration. So she gives them a shield, 250, 300, 400. So like looking at the 300. Three allies, 30 bonus damage. The thing is with Janna, if you three star her, she's completely bonkers because it like, look at this, like it goes up by one extra ally, the shield goes up by 100, the damage doubles. So like the, util like the utility gained, I would say it's like Janna 3 is twice as good as, as uh, Janna 2. Like it's such a huge difference, right? Like the, the buff is so, so immense. Uh, she's a mystic and she's a lightning. So 
if you get her if you get her chosen like you like getting Janna chosen honestly like on on stage two even like stage three she's either gonna help you win streak or preserve so much hp because if your opponent can't burst units down Janna will just keep by like, keeping them alive over and over again by shielding by shielding them also one trick of Janna if she's two star and there are some weak assassins your opponent has weak assassins you can put her in the back so that like the assassins start hitting her and she'll just keep shielding herself and obviously an ally or two like two allies so the assassins will never kill her while she gains mana and she buffs her whole team it's, it's brutal it is brutal uh, what i have to mention in 4.5 she got a mana mana nerf okay so she needs a lot more mana to cast because enlightened got buffed so at two enlightened this goes from seven auto attacks like seven times ten it goes to five five times 15 is 75. so that's that's pretty big and obviously at four it goes down it goes down to, to four uh because uh yeah 20 times four is 80 and if you get the bigger bonus it's 22 yeah it will go down to three so it's yeah it's uh seven without enlightened you really need to put it in line for it to go down to five and then if you go more enlightened it's four if you go even more it's at three uh if you ever chosen enlightened so janna is definitely worth running and uh she's great in the talent comp especially if talent gets low like she'll give him bonus damage and bonus damage on top of his ultimate which we'll get into once we go into the forecast is really very powerful so yeah and so consider even three starring her like if you're rerolling like if you're doing the reroll comps that I mentioned in the one cost, even some two cost reroll comps, and you're just picking up a lot of Jan, like you're just seeing a lot of Janus, pick them up, because three starring her is usually worth it. It, it. it makes a big difference. Jarvan the fourth. Now there's three Jarvans before him. Apparently they weren't as cool. They didn't make it into the into the game. So this guy is Jarvan fourth. Uh, Jarvan throws his his standard near the farthest enemy and pulls himself towards it. With his plants dealing magic damage to enemies he passes through, knocking them up and stunning them for one second. Okay, so just just reading this, understanding this, he will go diagonally the farthest, right? Or like the farthest. Usually, die. like you want him to go, you want him to hit as many enemies as possible. So we'll get into this when we deal with Pike. But Jarvan goes from from your side directly to the farthest enemy. So try to position him so that he stuns as many as possible. And obviously, if your opponent has a Jarvan. You want to make sure that his Jarvan uh, doesn't go for your carry. That's why it's good if you have sharpshooters, for example. You have one in the left corner, one in the right corner. So Jarvan will either jump here to one side or the other side. But Jarvan will not jump to the side where you have like two or three sharpshooters and stun them all. Okay, that, that's bad. You don't want that to happen. Uh, he's a keeper. So you definitely want to keep him if you're running cultists, as I mentioned before. Keepers and cultists work very well together. He's also a warlord. Warlords got buffed this patch. So you can run him as a, as a Warlord Synergy bot. And yeah, he's, he's good in three, six Warlords. I, I think you keep him over, over Y because he, he provides more CC. One thing I would, would like to mention about Jarvan is, you know how I talked about Janna being twice as good at three star? Jarvan four is thrice as good at three star. He's, he does three times more damage. So if somehow you get a chosen Jarvan, right? And you already have a bunch of Jarvans, or a bunch of Jarvans are showing up in your shop. Consider getting three-star Jarvan, because this damage is insane. Like 750 is it's completely insane. Like, look at like 600 health, like uh, 1080. So most units are somewhere around like 1k health, right? Apart from like vanguards and brawlers. So he can he can actually delete most carries, uh, most two-star carries, if he has like some sort of damage item. And he just go to the back, boom, blow something up. And he has a lot of HP, so he's going to cast probably two or three times and blow a lot of stuff up. So do consider three-starring him. I didn't put the three stars next to him because he's not really like an ideal three-star carry. And the thing about him is uh, re-rolling for Jarvan is a bit awkward. And also his like his two-star is not that great. His two, like this is the, the thing is, this is a utility. One-star, two-star, he's a utility hero. And three-star is a carry. So that's, that's something specific pertaining to Jarvan. Jax. Now Jax smacks, guys. Jax smacks. Jax dodges all incoming da uh, all incoming attacks, physical damage, for two seconds, then strikes all nearby enemies, dealing magic damage and stunning them for 1.5 seconds. Okay, just let, let that let that sink in. All incoming attacks, 
right? So if you build a declaw on Jax, he can't die. He's just gonna he's just gonna do his counter helix, right? He's gonna ignore all the magic damage with declaw, and he's just gonna sit there and tank forever. Um, I have I have experimented experimented a bit, and running something like sharpshooters with uh, Jax and Fiora is not that bad on stage two, because Fiora, as as we as we learned in the in the previous video. Uh, is immune for 1.5 seconds, right? And then she stuns. Jax is immune for two seconds. And then he stuns. So like Jax and Fiora buy you so much time. While Vanguards are just tanky, Jax and Fiora are not that tanky, but they have abilities that grant them like invulnerability for, for a few seconds. So they, they delay this they delay the game. So as long as you have some some damage, Jax is really good. And obviously if you can three star him, he he's a beast. His, his damage doesn't really go up that much. So it's not about the damage when he's 3 star It's just the fact that he has so much health. But I, I don't think he's worth 3-starring. Again, if you're re-rolling re for Yasuo and you're finding a lot of Jaxes, might as well get him. Uh, if you're playing some sort of... Yeah, if you're playing Wukong, possibly if you're playing Kale, he could be a decent decent frontline unit. So like if you want to go for Divine, like the old Warwick build, it's fine. He is a, he is a duelist. He is Divine. So run him in those comps. Uh, if you if you find a chosen Jax early, you definitely want to play him. It doesn't matter what what class or like what what trait is is uh, chosen, because at two star early on, he'll provide so much utility. You just like all you need is damage afterwards, right? Once you have Jax, Lulu, Lulu makes a low health ally become a giant, knocking up nearby enemies for one second. Huge fight allies gain bonus health for the rest of combat. So they, they, they changed it a while back. Um, this means, like, okay, so if, if you're playing against Dulu, you want a Giant Slayer, right? Because she's going to increase their health by 400, 600, or 950. So you need a Giant Slayer because she's going to keep buffing everyone. So Giant Slayer will actually be very, very useful against uh, teams that run a lot of, like, Brawlers or Lulu specifically because she'll, she'll make everyone Giants. Um, so why Lu why would I why did I put Lulu as a three star? Because she's just so good. If you find a chosen Lulu, like it doesn't really matter whether she's Elder or Mage. Like if she's Mage, you might want to run five Mages. If she's Elderwood, you might want to run six Elderwoods. But she's super super powerful. And if if you three star her, like the bonus health. I mean, it doesn't go up that drastically from six hundred six hundred to nine fifty. But what happens is she becomes a tank a, a tank of her own, right? You can kind of run her similarly to Annie in the front, because if you put her in the front, right, she will take a lot of damage, and she'll hugeify herself and another target. So like the way the way it works is with three mages or five mages, she's gonna cast twice, so she can hugeify herself and one more low health target. So either a frontline tank like like Annie, herself, or someone who's about to die like like your Vigar or your Magic Dragon, AKA Orlean Soul. Really strong unit, really, really powerful. The tags are really good, so definitely pick her up when you can. Nautilus. Now, he, he's a naughty guy. He's a naughty guy. Uh, Nautilus erupts the ground beneath his target, knocking them up, stunning them for a few seconds, and dealing magic damage. Okay, so the, the stun is kind of insane. Like, three, four, five stun. Like, if you compare it to Wukong, I think this is essentially twice as long, or almost twice as long as Wukong's stun. That's a pretty freaking long stun. So he can disable one unit for a while, right? Obviously, it's just one unit. Um, what I what I have found is that once you three-star him, his damage is very, very strong, right? And you only, like you don't want to three-star him every game, but you would three-star him if you get him chosen. Uh, you can get a Vanguard or a Fabled. Uh, personally, I tried Fabled, but uh, it has come to my attention that if you have a Fabled Nautilus, then you're less inclined to run uh, Cho'Gath. So you'd, you'd rather have a Vanguard Nautilus so you can run, so you, you have room for for Cho'Gath and Nico, and you get the extra Vanguard buff. Like this guy at three star, like the damage he does is insane. Like he typically like one shots, almost one shots units, right? With his spell. And I mean, the reduction was completely insane. I think 60% is, is correct. Like before, I think there was way higher. So now they reached the 60%. But if, if you have um, if you have the, the Fabled, if, if 
yeah, the Fabled bonus, if you have some sort of uh, healing on him, like a uh, Hextech or uh, Titans or something like that, he's literally unkillable. Because the way mana works is it's before reductions, right? So he gains mana from the damage he takes, but that's before reductions. So he'll take... Uh, okay, so this is like... Uh, it's six, six, uh, 6 mana per 100, per 100 damage. So he needs to take a bunch of damage, right? 6 per 100. So yeah, that's 2,000 damage to, to cast. If we're, yeah, 2, 000, he needs to take 2,000 damage and 3 autos, something like that. But with all the reductions, like, yeah, he's going to take like 2,500 damage to be able to cast. But since it's a Vanguard and since all the damage is reduced, the 2,500 damage might come out to something like 3, 4, 500 max. So he'll take like 400, 500 damage right and cast and then his shield is going to be up and then he's just going to keep casting and he can cast a bunch of times even without healing but if he has some sort of healing like if you manage to put in siphoners or if you manage to put a uh, hodge or hexag on him there's no way your opponent can kill him at three star so just keep that in mind uh he's probably not something you want to force but if you do get him chosen go for it fabled are fun fabled are really good because uh Nados is, is like very hard to kill Nico does a, a lot of damage if you two star or even ma like if you manage to three star her with her third bounce, and Cho'Gath is is really cool. Like with he stuns the whole board, so that's kind of broken, kind of broken in my opinion. Pike, Pike. Now uh, Pike is is uh, I think completely insane. That's why I put the two star two stars next to him. Uh, Pike leaves a a phantom at his location, then dashes behind the farthest enemy. After one second, his phantom returns to Pike, dealing magic damage to all enemies it passes through and stunning them for a few seconds. Uh, also, what they changed a couple patches ago is that the phantom doesn't just stop at Pike or like return to Pike. It kind of goes a little bit like uh, beyond him, so it, it stuns him instead of him. So he goes to like from one corner to the other corner and he stuns like the units in that corner all the way into the other corner. And like if he stops uh, and not in the last hex, he'll stun, he'll stun the last hex anyway. Uh, so Pike works similarly to Jarvan, right? Like it's it's the same thing, except Jarvan goes from your side of the board to their side of the board, while Pike goes from their side kind of to to your front line. So Jarvan, you want to position uh, with your composition and far away from their carries so that he goes towards their carries, while Pike, you want to typically position away from your composition so that units move towards your composition and Pike gets behind as many opponents as possible and then runs through all of them and stuns as many of them as possible uh he did get nerfed so like the damage is is it's kind of not that great obviously the stun duration is really good uh when i was when i was experimenting with 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 assassins and i got a three-star diana i also three-star pike uh the stun is still really good like the stun is really, the damage got reduced but the stun is good four seconds stun, stun is really really long really really long especially in like uh the the more of the, the mid late and like the late and end game Four seconds is such a long time. Your team has like so much time to kill everything. Uh, he's also a great Morello user, Sunfire Cape, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, and, and the reason why Pike is so good is because you can run him, with early, run him with early cultists. He can give you an assassin for, for Talon, for Diana, for Katarina in, in their respective comps. And he's also a slayer. So like if you wanna if you wanna play Olaf, Brolaf, uh, if you wanna play Trindamir, the Spindamir. And if you want to play Samira, the, the Daredevil, uh, he's really good. He's really good. Like, obviously, if you have Trindamir, Samira, and Brolav, it's great. It's great. Um, and you don't need Pike. But he like he gives you a lot of utility and a lot of flexibility. You can yeah, you, you play him with Talon. You play him with... Di like, he's such a great unit that you just want to, you just want to have him. And he, he gives you a lot of flexible options later in the game. So really consider picking up Pike and like sort of building one of these many compositions that he fits into so well. Uh, Rakan. Rakan. Yeah, this guy. This guy is completely insane. Rakan dashes to the furthest enemy within range, disarming all units it passes through for a few seconds and taunting his target. Rakan then creates a shield on himself for four seconds. Now, maybe, maybe you guys are a bit familiar with the game. There is a unit, which I'll which I will talk about in two days, called Shen. Now, Shen also dashes 
through or dashes around enemies, yeah, shielding himself. But Chen does not disarm them. And Shen is a four cost. So Shen gets a little bit more of a shield. Yeah, he gets a little bit more of a shield. But, uh, yeah, like, what's better? Shield or shield plus disarm? So shield plus disarm is super, super good. Uh, if you manage the three-star Rakan, if you manage the three-star Rakan and you put, like, a Sunfire Cape on him or Ionic Spark, any sort of, like, uh, burn items, like, you need, you need items that'll do damage because Rakan doesn't do any damage. And three-star Rakan is typically the last thing to survive. If he has a Sunfire Cape, if, if he has a Ionic Spark, some, some, some form of doing damage to your opponents, uh, they're, they're going to be angry. They're going to they're gonna get very angry. They're going to rage. And uh, Rakan is going to run around disarming everyone and yeah, smacking them for, uh, for a little bit of damage. He doesn't do much damage. But yeah, if he has some, some items like, like Sunfire Cape or Ionic Spark, they are screwed. They are so screwed. So definitely pick him up. And if you're considering playing some sort of Elder Comp, run Rakan. If you if you want to run a keeper comp with Zaya carry or even Kenra carry, run Rakan. He is really really good. He is not a two cost. He is definitely not a two cost. Uh, he he's a four cost. Yeah, he's he's like Shen, except just a little bit better than Shen. So like yes, obviously his stats are kind of like health and damage, all that all that stuff is relatively low, but his utility is is higher than Shen. Apart from like the fact that Chen is a mystic, but like yeah, in his respective comps, he's completely bonkers. Timo, 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 Timo. Timo fires a dart at the enemy with the highest attack speed. Now remember that, highest attack speed, right? So that means you don't want to clump up, and especially don't clump up your units around the unit that has highest attack speed, because if you have more units around your unit that has a highest attack speed, they will get hit by his dart for free. Because his dart explodes into a cloud of spores on a contact, poisoning nearby enemies. Poison enemies take magic damage over a few seconds and are blinded for the duration. Like, that's why I put in Teemo 2-star. Like, if you 2-star Teemo early, he's so powerful. I mean, this was like 300, 450. They, they had to reduce it to 250. They had to reduce that, reduce that a while ago to 400 because he's super, super oppressive. He's one of the one of the like apart from Pike, he's and P Pike and Jarvan, he might even be better than them at using Morellos early. So like not only does he blind them, he also like puts Morello on them, so uh, they will start losing HP. Uh, and if you if you two star Teemo, you pretty much are given a free pass until stage four, pretty much. Uh, I mean Teemo is really good into like AD comp, so if if you're running, uh, if like people are running a lot of Brolaps. Uh, maybe some Dianas, but like Brolaf and Yasuo comes to mind. Maybe Samara as well. Uh, Samira, like, he shuts down AD comps super, super hard. So he's like very unfun for your opponents. Very unfun for your opponents. And his tags are brilliant. Okay, so sharpshooter, sharpshooters got buffed. So if you just want one more sharpshooter, he's not going to blind one target. He's going to blind three targets. Yes, the damage obviously goes down. Like the first is going to be 400 and then I believe it's 65% reduction. So the second, the, the second uh, DOT, like damage over time, won't be 400. It'll be like, what, 150-ish. And then the third one does absolutely nothing. Like the third one is going to be reduced again by 65%. So like 65% of, of 150, that's like 60 damage. So it's like, let's say, this are, these are ballpark figures, but let's say he does like 400, 150, and 60 right so like he doesn't hurt the other targets but it doesn't matter whether he hurts them he blinds them so like they're taking a little bit of damage but they're blind so they're not doing anything and if you have morello on him obviously morello spreads no matter what like whether it's the primary secondary or tertiary target right so morello will spread so even if he does 60 damage with his with his dart to the on the on the second ricochet He's still poison, like he's still putting like whatever poison or the debuff, moral debuff on the unit. So the unit will burn for the full 10 seconds, taking 25% uh, of their HP away. And he's also a spirit and spirits got reworked. And in my, in, in my viewpoint or from, from, from where I'm standing, sitting, looking at it, is they got buffed. Like it's a, it's a flat bonus of 20 or 40% for your whole team. So running four spirits is also super powerful. If you have, if you have four spirits, 
uh, with like Timo and a sharpshooter, Timo will keep blinding everyone over and over again. And your units are going to be like super, super jacked, like super jacked up. Sorry, super jacked up. Like Kindred's going to kill stuff. Timo's going to blind stuff. Yumi's just going to be zapping around, healing everything over and over again. And Diana's just going to be smacking people. So uh, spirits are really, very really powerful. And sharpshooters are really good. Like, so Timo is like, I'd say one of the one of the premium two costs, like one of the best two costs that you want to that you want to find early, play early, and uh, help you get to your your later mid game or late game in a very healthy state. Vi, uh, Vi's attack blasts through her target, dealing magic damage to all enemies in a cone and reducing their armor for eight seconds. That's really long. Eight seconds is a really long time. So uh, yeah, she she is really good in uh like physical damage comps so the fact is like she's a brawler so she gets more hp uh she's a warlord so like this scale she gets more H like more hp still and obviously the this magic damage scales but obviously if you've ever run warlords apart from trindomir there aren't any physical damage dealers so Vi would be really good with Pindamir because uh, like if you have Vi and uh, you're playing against some comp that has a bunch of vanguards, Vi can melt their armor and then Trindomir can just spin to win through them. Uh, apart from that, Vi is just a synergy bot for Warlord. Uh, she's also a synergy bot for Brawlers. Um, yes, if you three star her, there is like this uh, sister Fister build uh, where you have like an RFC on her. Uh, blue buff and maybe a jeweled gauntlet or some sort of like damage item uh that is kind of okay but typically she's she's just a synergy bot you run her with brawlers you want to run her with warlords and you want to consider her if if you're going for any card of any kind of ad comp so great with trindomir maybe maybe you can run like vi trindomir broloff samara if you're if you're looking to do a lot of physical damage that's going to help obviously Jax can just laugh in her face because even if she reduces the armor uh, there's no no way anything else is, is killing him uh, any any magic any physical damage but uh, some sort of like vanguards or elderwoods that get a lot of armor she can punch through that and the armor reduction scales nicely so obviously like two stars is good enough three stars hard to get but like two star two star vi is going to help you a lot with uh, vanguards and armor targets vladimir vladimir deals magic damage to his target all nearby allies are healed for 50% of the damage dealt. It used to be, I believe, a bit lower. 50 is kind of high. Uh, but the important thing is it's his target. So you need to position in, in a way so that Vladimir doesn't target someone who has a lot of magic resistance. Right? So if anyone has some sort of cloak item or uh, even a declaw, like if he's going against a declaw, he doesn't do any damage against D-Claw, so he doesn't heal at all. But if you manage to position him well, 50% of damage dealt is completely insane, right? So if he if he's two star, he does 600 damage. There's some reduction, so I just say he does 400 damage at two star. He heals everyone for 200. That's not bad. That's not a bad heal. That's that's like like somewhere around a, a third or like maybe a fourth, like a bit over a fourth of of, of their health typically. So he's really powerful if you stack him with some items. He's really good early on. He's great with, with cultists, obviously, because you have, you, as I mentioned before, you want to run cultist keepers, so they all clump up. So when Vladimir casts, he heals everyone. He's also a siphoner, so if you add in a siphoner, um, he'll heal himself e even more than, than this. So And siphoners, I think, are, are really good, uh, like utility, to kind of go with mages to give them all hex techs. The thing is, they don't really work well with mages, so they're kind of tough to fit. Uh, I mean, what I what I think uh, siphoners are good for is also Talon. We'll get into that later, but like with with uh, Talon, the way Talon works is his ultimate actually counts as a spell, so he can heal quite a lot up from his ultimate. So like you can go three damage items on Talon, or like three damage items on any of your like even AD carries, and with two siphoners, they're gonna heal. A lot from when they cast their spell if it's like a damage spell so it's not gonna work on Brolaf it will work on Trinomir I believe so that's just something to keep in mind and last but not least we unleash the beast the man the legend Zed 
Uh, Zed is a uh, kind of still a shade, or essentially Zed is an assassin, I guess, because he jumps to the back. In eight, when combat starts, Zed teleports to the enemy backline. And passive every third attack, Zed deals bonus magic damage and steals percentage of his target's current attack damage. So I think you guys are very like most of you guys are familiar with Zed. Um, the damage steal is really good. Uh, if you can jump on uh, some sort of AD carry like like Samira, like Olaf, maybe Wukong, maybe Sivir, any any damage dealing carry in the back, he will not only kill them, but he will also like first he'll steal a lot of their damage, so he's he's gonna gain a lot of damage, right? He's also gonna shut them down so they don't do enough damage and gradually kill them, and then with with the extra damage, he's just gonna go to town on on their backline. So just the, the, the thing, the important thing about Zed, just briefly to mention something, um, you sort of want to make sure that Zed jumps somewhere where he's safe, right? You don't want Zed to jump into a cluster of, of, of opposing of your opponent's units because they will just kill him. So you want Zed, if, obviously, if you have, like, you need to have RFC on him so that he can jump somewhere and just chill in a corner far away from everybody and just pick them off slowly while, while they deal with... with uh, your units walking up. Uh, he's a ninja, so obviously you want to have either just Zed or Zed with all the ninjas. There's there's nothing else. Like it's either one or four. So you do need Kenny, Akali, and Shen. And he gains Slayer, so that's uh, like he doesn't obviously he doesn't have Shade anymore, so he can't drop aggro, but he can heal a lot. He can heal a lot with Slayer. Um, so if you have like f my best friend or your best friend Pike who's also a slayer, then you just need one more slayer and uh, you'll be slaying and he'll be healing and he'll be doing a lot more damage and he'll be like healing as soon as he gets low. So you just need like a QSS RFC Runan, something like that on Zed and he'll jump to the back line and go to town, do a lot of damage and start healing himself up more if he drops lower and if the units he's hitting drop lower, he, he kills them even faster. So he's still okay. I think he's relatively balanced. Obviously, if you three-star him, he's super, super powerful because you spike relatively early. And uh, yeah, un until people start playing like two-star legendaries or like almost full two-star uh, four-class board, um, he's going to keep winning. So if you can three-star him, then you can just go fast eight, fast nine, put in some legendaries and win the game. If you have like, if you have him three-star, if you have uh, Slayers activated, ideally ninjas as well, and uh, perfect items for him. You're gonna have a good time and that's it guys so thank you for watching and i hope uh, that uh, when you wake up you'll be a master player